I like this shirt a lot. It says chicken nugget. Chicken nugget. The common assumption by most language learners is that native speakers are the be all end all. They are the ultimate authority about your target language. But I want to poke a few holes in that today, explain why native speakers are not perfect about everything, and how actually the people you were not considering before might actually give you the better advice. That's not to say native speakers are useless for language learners. We should reconsider the role of native speakers as tools tools for language acquisition. Right now, I think we think of them way too highly. Ideally, we should think of them in a very particular circumstance. Someone who is a native speaker of Spanish did not have the same journey that you did as a learner of Spanish. You may think they have what I want, Spanish skills, and I am learning Spanish, I should learn from them. But this is a mistake because this is entirely different. Learning a language as a conscious thinking adult versus being a native speaker who learned as a baby are two entirely different sets of experiences. Therefore, it doesn't quite make sense for them to be the blueprint for your journey. If you want to follow the way they learn Spanish, you need to become a baby, have your mom speak to you only in Spanish, and go to school in a Spanish-speaking country, become educated in Spanish, but that doesn't work for you. Rather, for structural things like this, the person you should be comparing yourself to is other language learners of the same target language. Preferably those language learners are coming from the same native language, so English to Spanish or French to Spanish or Chinese to Spanish. Their journey is going to be much more similar to yours. So in the sense of an itinerary for language learning, first you must learn nouns, then you must learn adjectives or whatever order it is, you should be listening to people like you. If you had a native speaker friend and you asked him, teach me Spanish, and they're gonna start you with some phrases that you're not going to intuitively understand and this is the complete wrong direction. They're gonna teach you hello, thank you, and then they're gonna teach you some curse words, and then they're gonna teach you what to say when you're really mad. This is not the right order for you. So in this sense, you cannot have your native friend teach you a language who has had no experience learning the language. If someone has not learned another language, they cannot truly understand when their student has a misunderstanding. It's impossible to comprehend what is not clicking. If there is someone who has a degree in language teaching, they might just start reciting some definitions they have memorized. In order to impart knowledge, in order to impart grammar understanding, the teacher needs to have a truly deep understanding of your experience. This doesn't mean they have to be a non-native speaker, this just means they have to have learned a language before. In the Spanish example, this could be a Spanish teacher who learned English, or this could be a Spanish teacher who learned something totally unrelated like Arabic. But once that teacher learns another language, they understand the structure of their native language and they're able to explain it a little better. Someone who intuitively understands the language is a master of the language by any metric, but they're probably not able to recite the reasons why they're using some certain pattern. For me, I think I gained a really deep understanding of the English language, my native language, after having learned so many languages. The situation that pops out in my head is about the English present perfect, like I have done. I learned French before, I learned Bulgarian before, and I understand how they did similar structures, and I assumed English would work the same, but it wasn't until I learned Swedish and read a Swedish textbook and the explanation of why Swedish people use that tense, that's when it finally clicked for me why we use that tense in English. The present perfect isn't just a past tense like the passé composé in French, it is a very specific situation where we're talking about the present and it's affected by something that happened in the past. I'm not here to explain English grammar, I'm using this as an example as 
another language was the trigger for me to understand something in my native language. I was able to explain something that was already intuitive to me thanks to the perspective of another language. And it wasn't one or two language, this was language number like five or six, I think, until I finally understood this point in English. It just doesn't make sense to assume a native speaker is an expert in something they have never done before, namely learning their native language. A native speaker never learned their native language. This is something that was just instilled in them as a baby. So they have a very different understanding of what that language is compared to the person who learns it as an adult, who has to learn about the intricacies, the why we do that. Being able to speak does not mean you know how it works. And being a non-native speaker can be a very useful tool for other learners who need something explained in a very foreign, exotic way. That doesn't make sense for a native speaker. Just today, I had an italki lesson where I was teaching English, and we were talking about these two grammar expressions, I had better, and it's time that I did something. They were in the same lesson, of the textbook and for a native speaker I had better do some cleaning is just like one expression you can't separate it this is just the way it is but if a learner asks you some questions like what is the difference between I had better do something and I should do something the native speaker who has not learned another language might give a totally unhelpful answer like uh, that's just the way we say it or uh, there's no reason if they can't explain it what is the purpose of that native speaker. I have had two very interesting experiences with non-native speaker language teachers in my life. In high school when I was learning French, my French teacher was an American person. She was not a native speaker of French, but I think she was an amazing French teacher because she was able to explain things in ways that we American native English speakers could understand. She didn't get so deep into the theoretical stuff. She was able to make metaphors in English that were easier to understand. But at the same time, in retrospect, I noticed some issues with her teaching style because she had only had experience with English and French. In particular, I was really annoyed with her explanation of rendre because she said like, well, that's an English word. Do you guys not know what render means in English? And it just wasn't clicking. But I think it would have been so much easier to explain it as like make something adjective that would have explained render like instantly to us. But this explanation of that French word was so something that I realized when I was learning Korean and imparting language on students is something really difficult and it takes a lot of experience and it's never going to be perfect. I had another very interesting experience as the native speaker in the classroom when my family returned to Bulgaria when I was like eight or nine. At that point, I had already been a native English speaker and my Bulgarian was like at a no sabo kid level. I had an accent, I was using awkward words, but I was able to communicate. And I was enrolled in a Bulgarian elementary school where we had an English class. And this English teacher was not a native speaker. She was a Bulgarian native speaker, but she had learned in university English. I think she probably spent some time abroad. I can't remember her story. But there was a lot of situations where she would mark something wrong on my quiz because that's not following the book, but it's something that's totally natural in American English. So at that time, me and my sister made fun of them for how bad their English education is. But I think my opinion has evolved with years. Yes, this teacher was being way too strict and with the book and she was marking a native speaker as wrong because it wasn't following the book, which kind of seems ridiculous. But the most important thing was, were her students understanding the English grammar? You can pick at the non-native speaker teacher and being like, oh no, this wasn't right, or this pronunciation was weird. You don't really know English. But the most important thing is, do their students understand? I think she was totally successful in this way. The other students had a pretty okay level of English, considering they were like still in elementary school. So in this way, she was successful, even though there were parts that we would make fun of her and be like, oh, that's such a weird accent, or nobody actually says that. That doesn't matter because the goal was met. And this is something really valuable about the non-native speaker teacher. They are able to impart knowledge 
on to native speakers of the same language with very easy explanation and not complicating things too much. They can make a quick metaphor that it's like this in our native language and move on. So I've been dissing native speakers and building up non-native speakers for this whole video. So why do we even need native speakers? There is a time and place for them because they are a master of something. When a native speaker hears something unnatural or hears something that is not common in the language, their ears immediately pop up like, oh, something was wrong here. And this is a very important skill when you are learning a language. They can instantly tell you when something is unnatural, but their explanations are probably wrong or very unhelpful. In a perfect world, they can explain why this expression is unnatural here, but sometimes it's just impossible for them. They had never really learned this directly. They were just intuitively made to understand this thing. I remember a few years ago when I was practicing a lot of Korean writing on Lang 8, there were a lot of conflicting corrections on that website. Some people said that my sentence was perfect, doesn't need any changes. Some other people were like nitpicking at some small things. Some other people completely wanted to change my sentence. And that shows something. They weren't lying, nobody was wrong there. It's just there is a million ways to be a native speaker of a language. While there are a million ways to say the same thing, they can tell you that this is not something they've ever heard and native person say. So I think native speakers are really the only authority on does this sound natural, but they are probably the weakest authority when asking the question, why does this not sound natural? Native speakers are a necessary tool that we're all going to use when we're learning a language, but we need to be using them in a very particular circumstance. They are the masters of is this natural or not. They are not the masters of explain this grammar to me. We should be taking that into account. We should be getting some advice of what we should be careful of from other learners like us. We should be getting explanations from people who understand our native language and we should get some direction about what's unnatural from native speakers. So there is a place for everyone in your language learning regimen. And I want to dispel this idea that native speakers are all you need and you should never use a non-native speaker teacher. It's not the full story to just say natives are perfect in every way. Sometimes I would even say natives are wrong because this is something that only they say. I don't speak to a lot of Bulgarian speakers outside my family, so there's this really funny result where I model a lot of my words off of my grandma who makes a lot of original words that literally don't exist anywhere else. She's a native speaker, she's not wrong, but nobody else says that particular expression other than her. And I just thought that's the only way to say it because she's the only person I've heard saying that. Basically, listen to many people when you're learning a language. One person is not enough. Listening to one native speaker is definitely not enough. Listening to only one type of speaker is not enough. You really need to be listening to the stories of many people. So the stories of language learners are very valid and very important to other language learners to use as an example. We cannot just dismiss somebody because they don't speak perfectly and we can't just accept everything someone says because they're a native. This is not the full story. Hopefully that brings some nuance to your language learning. It's such a shame that people have this misconception when it's so obvious to me that so many native speakers don't know what they're talking about and a lot of non-native speakers are really knowledgeable but people just dismiss them as ew non-native speakers ew you're not perfect ew you have an accent that's not the full story there's so much more to language learning than the perfect accent if you like this video please give it a like subscribe if you want to see more from me you can check out my social media which i have linked below i also have a website at studywithalex.com where i write about language related things like today's video so thank you for watching today i'll see you for another video very soon, all right? Au revoir.